Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, to Chris for that really great introduction. Um, I'm Molly Garfinkel, and I'm here from City Lore, New York City's urban folk life center, where I run the Place Matters program. City Lore was founded in 1986. We document, present, and advocate for New York City's grassroots cultures to ensure their living legacy in stories and histories, places, and traditions. In 1998, 20 years ago, we established the Place Matters program with the goal of broadening the ways that preservation is understood and practiced in New York by offering alternate ways of identifying, celebrating, and ultimately preserving places. At City Lore, we abide by Don Adams and Arlene Goldbard's definition of cultural democracy, that cultural diversity is a positive social value to be protected and encouraged, that authentic democracy requires active participation in cultural life, not just passive consumption of cultural products, that many cultural traditions coexist in human society, and that none of these should be allowed to dominate or become an official culture and that equity demands fair distribution of cultural resources and support throughout the society. We work with the twin missions of helping to sustain traditions and places that represent the rich diversity of cultures that coexist in New York, and of trying to do so in ways that are meaningful to the practitioners or communities who steward them. The initiative has introduced preservationists and community activists to new ways of thinking about the role of place in public life as well as a new appreciation for the ways in which non-experts can identify and sustain places in their local landscapes that embody a broader historical record and help to keep communities healthy and vibrant. One of our purposes is to propose reasons for valuing places that go beyond architecture, and another is to consider how to let others know that these places are important. Primarily, we work with the sites that the public finds significant. We use a variety of methodologies, including oral history, history, and building and architectural research. But the program's decidedly ethnographic bent facilitates documentation and advocacy that reflects the perspectives of the people who create and care for community places. At the heart of the project is the census of places that matter, a unique inventory of places and histories that warrant attention and caretaking. The census provides nominators with a public platform to ask others for support if places need some kind of a help. Additionally, journalists, writers, and others may learn about these places and help to make them more visible. The census also illustrates what people call a sense of place and demonstrates the role or power of place in public life. As one geographer noted, sense of place is made up of experiences, mostly fleeting and undramatic, repeated day after day and over the span of years. It is a unique blend of sights, sounds, smells, and a unique harmony of natural and artificial rhythms, such as the sunrise and sunset of work and play. One of the benefits of working with communities for two decades is having a chance to get to know them beyond real estate, a tension-producing topic, to say the least. One of my favorite examples of long-term engagement started very modestly with several music and dance-related nominations to our census. Together with the Hunts Point Community Development Corporation in Hunts Point, Bronx, City Lore documented Latin music and hip-hop histories of the South Bronx. The purpose of the project was to transform the neighborhood's distinctive musical heritage into a resource that could be tapped for cultural and civic renewal. From the 1940s through the 1970s, Hundreds of Latino musicians and dancers lived in the South Bronx, including Tito Puente, Charlie and Eddie Palmieri, and Ray Barreto. Dozens of dance halls, clubs, and theaters hosted the music, and people from all over the city came to enjoy it. By the start of the 1970s, a deadly combination of factors precipitated the decline of the South Bronx. The fires that tore through the neighborhood ripped it apart. Nonetheless, its legacy remained a deeply rooted part of Latin music history and continues to live in the memory of musicians and audiences alike for its unparalleled decades and of intense creativity. Moreover, out of the fires emerged a hard-edged urban hip-hop rooted in the streets, playgrounds, and burned-out lots of the neighborhood in the early 1970s. During the height of the destruction, teenagers, like the mambo and salsa musicians before them, held parties and jams in schools and basements, parks and playgrounds. They reclaimed their spaces, and as their grandparents and parents had done in the 1940s and 50s, made the spaces work for them. 
Our project evolved over several years and revealed how creative expression helps to foster and sustain community in the Bronx when the landscape looked bleakest. What galvanized our interest in particular was the notable role of place in the story. It seemed to be the critical mass of clubs, dance halls, local bars, candy stores, playgrounds, rooftops, and home parties that helped to stimulate the critical bursts of creativity and helped to create a supporting group of fans for the musical styles. Place Matters staff conducted almost three dozen oral history interviews with musicians, dancers, industry figures, and fans. We consulted, humanities, we consulted humanities scholars, conducted research, consulted texts, and all of these researches formed the base of a variety of projects that aim to publicize the history and preserve this creative legacy in popular memory. The From Mambo to Hip Hop project generated four local community conversations, a Mambo to Hip Hop map and brochure, which put the local uh, history on the landscape and encouraged self-guided walking tours, we also created a series of guided walking tours and bus tours of the heritage sites, and you can participate in a number of these during Jane's Walk, which is hosted by MAS, um, as well as a feature-length uh, documentary called From Mambo to Hip Hop, A South Bronx Tale, which we'll see a clip of now. Something about the Bronx is just, it brings fire in me. I mean, if they do a show down in the Bronx or a big competition, it should be in the Bronx. It's where it started from. It's more spiritual. But if you wasn't from the Bronx, man, you was just beginning somewhere else. We had the most clubs, we had the most musicians. You had to come up to the Bronx. Everybody was coming up to the Bronx. We weren't looking for a way out of the barrio or out of the Bronx. None of that. For us, it was, to some extent, spiritual. In 2000, Place Matters and The Point also presented a reunion concert of musicians who had graduated from the local elementary school, PS52. The PS52 All-Stars performed one summer night in the park across from the school. Ray Barreto and other legendary locals showed up. But the sites, the school and the park, were significant to the musical history as well as being important community landmarks. The project helped to highlight the ecology of places that mutually reinforced and helped to foster a sense of place and community, as well as music proliferation. To explain why so much of the project focused on interpretation rather than, histor than on historic preservation, it is important to know that much of the 20th century physical infrastructure of the South Bronx was lost to the fires and political and property abandonment of the 70s. Noting this, the project generated a successful listing to the National Register of Historic Places in 2001 for Casa Amadeo in Longwood, which is the longest running Latin music store in New York City. This was the first register listing to recognize Puerto Rican migrant history. It was the first place connected to mainland Puerto Rican heritage to ever be listed. Of the surviving structures that once hosted music and dance, playing a role in cultural movements of international stature, only Casa Amadeo continues the tradition. In the last few years, City Lore and Wedco, the Women's Housing and Economic Development Corporation, have collaborated on a bricks and mortar space to showcase much of the knowledge and traditions that shaped or were amplified in through Mambo to Hip Hop. Currently, the Bronx Music Heritage Center is in a temporary home in Cortona Park East, where it serves as a community center, performance venue, and musical laboratory for the myriad communities that call the Bronx home. Wedco, BFC Partners, WXY Architecture, and local projects are now collaborating on a mixed-use development called Bronx Commons, which includes affordable housing, retail space, and green recreational space, as well as a 14,000-square-foot cultural and educational space that will be the centerpiece of the Bronx Commons. The Bronx Music Hall will be the permanent home of the Bronx Music Heritage Center. It will have a flexible performance space, a digital archive including materials from Mambo to Hip Hop, and spaces for music and dance rehearsals and performances. The Place Matters Mambo to Hip Hop project is a good example of how interpreting the story can contrib contribute to public knowledge while supporting historic preservation and cultural conservation. It also demonstrates how local cultural assets can be recovered and used as a resource for instilling pride of place and fostering renewal of the environment. 
What Mambo to Hip Hop usefully demonstrates is that historic interpretation can contribute significantly to public knowledge, to the revival of pride of place, and to a community's positive hold on the future. Thank you.